Hi guys, Ryu here with another tutorial for Blender. In this one, we're gonna talk about optimizing your mesh for UV unwrapping. So I get this simple uh, model, kind of like a sci-fi cube generator, whatever the hell it is. A really simple one, but it's gonna be good enough to explain the basics of, you know, the principles of UV unwrapping and how to uh, attack it. So the first, the most important thing is that you want to unwrap your mesh in a way that uh, the islands, the UV islands, um, are unwrapped in the most efficient, efficient way. Uh, so the texture uh, resolution is going to be, you know, as high as possible. Because the more islands you have in this uh, square here, in the UV editing uh, section, uh, you know, the lower the resolution is going to be of your texture altogether, unless you want to assign texture to different parts of your object, which is not really the best way of doing it, because then you're going to have more draw calls in game and, you know, and so on and so forth. So you want to be as efficient as possible here. Before we get started, guys, I just want to say thanks to Russell Morahan for all his tips and, you know, advices on actually um, UVs, optimization, uh, gaming assets, all those, you know, all that malarkey. Uh, he is a game dev from London, and we're working together on a game, a uh, sci-fi game, probably going to be an early access next year, which I'm looking forward to because the game looks amazing, and it's going to be fun. So anyway, I uh, just want to say thanks, you know, uh, because uh, I wouldn't have this knowledge without him. And I just wanted to share a few tips, you know, a few things, small things with you guys. So... As I said, it's important that, you know, this island is utilized, uh, you know, to, to the maximum. So when you switch from layout to UV editing, um, you know, you're going to be able to, to see your um, UVs in here as long as you unwrap them. Now, you can unwrap them automatically in Blender by clicking on Smart UV Project, but that's not really the best way of doing it because it's just inefficient, okay? Um, Blender just sliced the hell out of this mesh, created all these tiny, you know, islands, and this is not really ideal. So let's first think about optimizing this mesh. Like I said, you know, you want to remove all the junk that you don't need. So for example, what we could do is we could, you know, insert these faces and delete them. Because if this is going to stand on the floor, right, and it's not going to, you know, topple over, uh, player is not going to see the bottom, meaning we don't need that... Um, uh, we don't need these faces, right? So we can insert them and just uh, delete them. You could probably do the same thing in here, but uh, I I'm just not going to bother with these. Um, but, you know, if you really wanted to go full anal, um, you could do that. Um, we're going to remove these as well. And then stuff like this, for example, right? I mean, in this case, it's okay because, uh, you know, um, this face here... Uh, it's just a singular face, but let's say that, uh, you know, this mesh was kind of like a lane on top of it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that this side, you know, doesn't have any face because you don't really, you know, you don't really need that face, right? So you want to make sure that uh, um, the back faces are just removed. Here we could do the same thing technically, but, you know, maybe someone's going to look inside, so we're just going to leave it. But... Uh, um, more or less, you know, this would do. Also, any additional edges like this, you know, you, you, you just want to remove because that's unnecessary geo, right? You don't want unnecessary geo, so you remove it. Now, another important thing is that you do want to apply bevels to your mesh. However, um, there is a way of doing it, okay? So let me grab a cube and move it in here. And if I'm going to apply, uh, let me just switch to a layout for a sec, you're going to see better. So when I'm going to apply bevels in here, right? I got three segments you can see on the bottom in hard ops uh, pop out right so i press z you can see that i have three segments what you want is one segment okay that's called mid poly uh, beveling and on top of this right once you decide on the profile of a bevel and the size you want to apply weighted normals so now we're gonna have bevel and weighted normals running on that mesh and trust me it's literally identical or very very close to uh, um, you know bevel with three segments so this one has three right and the one on the left has only two so if I you know get close to them you, you literally can't tell the difference which one is which right? it's very difficult but the difference between you know uh, poly count is gonna be massive so if I apply uh, this bevel here and I apply this bevel here you will see that the cube on the right, right, so this one, 
has 188 trees in total, whereas this one has only 44. So, you know, that's um, th that's a lot less. It's like, you know, four times less, right? That's important. So you, you don't want to play with this junk, but you want to apply, uh, you know, mid poly bevels, and I'll tell you why. I've seen a lot of example of uh, in games and, you know, um, during development um, of game assets, etc. So I've seen a lot of examples where bevels were baked onto uh, the low poly mesh. So what you do is you simply bake high poly mesh with a bevel onto a low poly mesh without a bevel and you can achieve uh, the bevel effect with a normal map. So just simply like baking details, right? Or decals or whatever. But it looks like shit because lighting in the game is gonna fall in different angles and sometimes it's just awful you got like beveled edges mixed with sharp edges you got sharp edges popping out of nowhere it just looks like garbage so if you want you know your game asset to look properly in game in any game you want to optimize it as much as possible and then what you want to do is you want to apply the mid, uh, mid poly bevel meaning you're gonna have double edge on every single edge right so it's gonna be split however you can remove this from certain places, like for example, in deep crevices like here, right? the, you know, like uh, these indentations, you don't really need that bevel um, in here. Also, uh, optically, it's gonna look a bit better when you have no bevel in, you know, in a place where two uh, metal plates or whatever uh, meet at a 90 degrees angle, it's gonna look better without it, um, especially for AO and, um, uh, texturing etc it's just gonna look better visually in game but you want uh, you know you want nice smooth bevels all around so for example in places like this I would leave this bevel inside this will of course add the complexity of UV unwrapping but you know what are you gonna do it's either you're gonna look good or you know you're gonna be lazy so it's your choice but that's that's how it goes now um, this would be more or less all you need to know for you know optimization of the mesh but there's one more detail that you know it's important to to realize that you don't really have to unwrap the whole thing because what you can do is you can run a bisect modifier okay so you literally split your mesh in half right so you only unwrap half of the mesh and if the other half is identical so it's symmetrical or any part of the mesh is symmetrical you don't really have to worry about it okay so um, let's say if you, for example, had this part split, so let's split it up, you know, uh, let's split this, this mesh from, from its main structure, all right, so I'm going to split it, right, and let's say I wanted to run it this way, okay, and I wanted to have this piece separate, okay, from uh, the whole mesh, so what I would need to do is I would need to get into the main mesh, select these vertices around here, and probably make it a little bit smaller, so uh, just, you know, scale it teensy weensy bit inside until uh, it disappears, let's remove this edge too, because we don't need it, so now you see that uh, we got this uh, nice, uh, nice cut inside so we got rid of this bevel and we did the same thing on the other side so uh you know it looks pretty cool and at the same time we uh we know we split the mesh for for example texturing so it's easier for you to texture different objects you know you can do that but then you still have to combine them into one anyway in the end so there's not a tip guys that you know you you don't have to unwrap the whole thing you can unwrap the half of it and then you simply uh mirror the uvs because they're gonna be identical on each side right so you need to think how you want to um, mirror your mesh. For instance, if I was mirroring this way, so from uh, this side to this side, it would be a bit weird because I would have to deal with half circles, right? So this one's actually perfect uh, bisect to the other side, which allows me to form more optimal, uh, more natural sort of UV unwrap. Anyway, so that would be everything for you know, the basics of optimizing mesh for UV unwrapping. And probably in the next video, at some point, I'm going to discuss actually how to UV unwrap this uh, manually, because like I said, uh, the automatic UV unwrapping doesn't really yield good results. It's just too generic. I mean, you could get away with it, but it, it's, it's not optimal. Okay. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the vid. As always, link to hard ops and box cutter as well as machine add-ons in the video description. So if you don't have them, go ahead and get them because they're fantastic. Doesn't cost you anything and helps the channel at the same time. Thanks for watching. Catch you next video.